stereochemistry of this reaction is very interesting. So what we're going to see here is a couple of things. So I want to start off here right in the kind of the middle of the section here. And I'm going to put here a carbon. And then let's throw here a nice leaving group. And then let's make this um, about an ethyl. And then let's throw on our wedge here. Let's make that a methyl. So here's a CH3. And then let's throw an H back here. All right, now the first step of this reaction, if you guys remember, right, the first step of this reaction is that we're going to have our leaving group leave, right? That's our first step. So we're going to come over and we're going to do this. So now we have a loss of our iodide. So again, here's our RDS, right? That's our step number one. Let's write a number one right here for our step, step number one. All right, and again, this is for, let's just assume just a, an S and one is occurring for this. Now, what that's going to give us is this intermediate. So we're going to have our carbon here. Then we're going to have our ethyl hanging out over just like this. And then our CH3 here. And our H back here, just like that. Now, what we're going to have left on this is we have a P orbital lobe here. And then the other P orbital lobe down here, just like this. All right, now, the other thing that happens here, so again, and then let's put our plus charge in here. Right, make a note of, of a couple things. So remember, that's, that is a planar sp2 hybridized carbon. Now, when iodide leaves, it doesn't actually just get booted off into the ether. You know, it's still hanging out. So it actually forms this thing called a contact ion pair. So kind of right here, it's, it's on that top of the part of our carbon. So I'm just going to draw a sphere right here and put I minus in it. It's hanging out right there. We haven't given it sufficient time to dissociate. It's still touching essentially the carbon with the plus charge on it. Now from this step, we can go one of two directions. So what we're going to do is this is we're going to come up here. And of, the, of course, this is a reversible reaction, or we're going to come down this direction. Again, another reversible reaction. And to this, we will add H2O. And we're going to do it, kind of carry this out in two, two different pathways. Because remember, that top lobe and the bottom lobe are um, prone to react, right? So looking at this top lobe, we're going to come around here and we make a bond with this, essentially, right? Now, as far as the next step of this reaction goes, we're going to have our carbon here. That's going to be connected to an oxygen from your water. And that water still has two H's on it. And recall, it's that lone pair that's making that bond of carbon. So we're going to have a lone pair left there. And that's going to put a formal charge of plus one on the oxygen. Now, this ethyl group here and the methyl group and the H are going to get pushed down. So this is going to be a CH2, CH3. Here we have... A methyl, so I'll put our methyl group in there. And then we have an H right there. Now we can we can do this attack from the bottom too. So I'm just gonna use a dotted line here to kind of differentiate it a little bit. But we could come down here and we could do this. So we could do this bottom attack. So right up up here, of course, we have our top attack. Down here, we're doing a bottom attack. So what, what's that going to give us? Well, we're going to have our carbon here. But now, pointing down, we're going to have that oxygen with our two H's and a plus charge. Now, since the water is approaching from this direction, it's going to cause these groups to get pushed up. Right, so we're drawing like a tetrahedral here. So 
we're going to come over here and we're going to put our ethyl and then here's your methyl and then we have an H that's left there right so swing around there and put the H somewhere on a, on a dash so this would be our step number two for this reaction now our last step here is going to be deprotonation so we're going to come over here and we're going to use our solvent to do that and that's why this is called a solvolysis reaction because the solvent is now going to get broken so it doesn't matter which one of these ages we're going to take just come over and grab one and then that set of electrons is going to come over onto our oxygen so what that's going to give us here is our carbon now we have an O H there and then the rest of those groups are not going to change at all right so you could literally cut and paste this if you're working on a computer or something like that right so there's your CH3 and then here's your H all right so um, in, in this case, right, if we think about back to SN2, right, SN2 is where we have that, that kind of umbrella that gets inverted. Um, in this case, the retention has been retained. So what we say over here is that we have a retention of configuration. Right, in other words, the ethyl group the methyl group and the H are still pointing down in the same orientation as they were right there, right? But look here, here we've had an inversion. So we call this an inversion of configuration. But let's write out what the product is here. So we're not done. We're gonna take this and we're gonna come over and grab one of those H's. And then those electrons are now gonna come down onto our oxygen atom. All right, so what that's gonna give us here is our our carbon and then down here we're gonna have our OH and there's your ethyl and again your methyl and your H stay in the same position so there's your CH3 and there's your H now both of these make H3O plus but again we often omit that so again we call this now an inversion of configuration. So here's our inverted product and here's our retention. So the question I have for you is um, what is the distribution? Is it exactly 50-50? Notice up here that I say roughly equal probability. All right, well, let's think about what's happening. So if this reaction is just ca being carried out, right, we lose our iodo group, but it's still hanging out right here, right? It's still kind of just sticking around. If it's sticking around, then it's in the way of this water coming over here, right? So when water comes in, it's got to boot out the iodide. However, down here, that water has no such interference. It has free access to that bottom lobe. Because of that, that lobe is more approachable in the sense that it's more available. We don't have iodide sitting around. So what I like to say is, well, we have slightly more inversion than retention. Now, if you, if you give this carbocation that we formed here sufficient time for that contact ion pair to dissociate, then you could get 50-50.